These are the best strategies of 2023 that have been released so far, but they also have many disadvantages, which I will talk about now. Territory, farming and fighting, a farm simulator and at the same time a military strategy. Here are simplified graphics imitating games released in the Ninities. The game is sounded with high quality, the music is not annoying. The game is currently in the early access stage, but already now the project deserves attention. You will lead a small village here that has every chance of growing into a huge kingdom. To achieve success you need Explore the surrounding area in search of useful resources. Ensure that the fields are sown in a timely manner and do not forget about harvesting. Build new residential buildings so that the population has a place to live. Research technologies. Produce food, weapons, and clothing. Protect your possessions from the encroachment of the forces of evil and monsters living in the area. If you succeed, then a small village with just one building will soon become a real metropolis where thousands of people will live. You do not need to assign a task to each resident, just specify the task and they themselves will do everything to complete it. This will simplify management when there are too many residents to pay attention to each individually. The lands around the settlement are not as safe as they might seem. Many evil creatures wander among the vegetation, dreaming of destroying all living things. The combat system is not complicated, you just need to specify a target to attack and the warriors themselves will take care of victory if their strength is sufficient for this. In addition to industrial and residential buildings, pay attention to art. Build art objects to decorate the territory of your city and make residents happier. The game is being developed by only one person at the moment, which is very rare these days and deserves respect. Localization for this reason has not yet been implemented very well, but work is underway on this, you just need to wait a little. Surviving the Abyss, Earth, 1976 with the Cold War in full swing, you have been tasked with building and directing a deep-sea research facility working on human cloning. Survive against all odds in the extremely unforgiving abyss by maintaining oxygen, energy, food, and more to keep your crew alive. Find and mine resources to build, light your way in the dark, and explore your surroundings to advance your research. Capture the diverse, well-adapted flora and fauna of the deep, but be careful. Darkness hides unexpected horrors, and only light keeps them at bay. The game is interesting and even captivates with complexity from the very beginning. It gives a beautiful picture. But the further you play, the more you realize that the gameplay here is not thought out and is not balanced at all. Questions begin from the moment the game asks you to separate the factory part of the base and the residential part. It feels like the math in the game is very buggy, especially if you start building two autonomous bases and the resource counter is common. How do you understand where there is enough electricity slash oxygen and where there is not? Everything ends very quickly, there is little research and the end of the game will come after 4 to 5 hours of intense play. The potential with the DNA combination is not revealed, there are 2 or 3 calculations that you use throughout the game, the rest is a false sense of the breadth of possible combinations. They may be numerous, but many are simply useless. For the fascinating hours of challenge, the original idea and the eerie atmosphere, I recommend it for review, but a lot of work needs to be done here to make the game worth its money. Pharaoh, A New Era This game is a remake of a very old city builder from 1999. A little later, an edition about Cleopatra was published. In the remake, the edition is built into the game. This is still the same Pharaoh with his cellular construction. This is really the same thing when they took what was there calmed it, sleek it, fixed the bugs and released it. Pros Supports all types of resolutions, even wide formats. Redesigned interface Controversial in places, but generally convenient. Great music The atmosphere is created just right. Gameplay settings In the settings you can now create a global pool of workers, or you can play as before. Choose as you like. You can also make a fixed percentage of workers. The graphics are nice, the warm and lab visual style is also preserved. Of the minuses, enchanting number of bugs. Sometimes you even have to start the task all over again. Sometimes demolish and build new buildings. There is no point in listing them, there are simply a huge number of them. No map rotation. This may seem like a small thing to some, but this feature is very convenient for spot building and getting into corners. Military system. There's just a guard here. In short, when you are attacked, 
A separate window opens where two armies in an open field poke each other with spears and arrows. The one with the largest army will win. The question arises, why then do you need to build gates, walls, towers? Unclear, they promise to change it. Predators, there are predators on the map that eat your subjects who come close. And that's the problem. Nothing can be done with them. There is no way to fight them. It is possible to disable predators in the settings. A very interesting feature. Let's add another setting. Endless gold, not dying soldiers. They promise to change it. Construction of monuments, pyramids, etc. I know that the pyramids took a very long time to build. But we're playing a game here, a very long process, especially when all the goals are completed and only the pyramid remains. An incredibly interesting activity is to close pop-up messages and wait for them to finish there. Notifications in the game are extremely inconvenient. Often, notification bars at the top of the screen interfere with construction. The layer system also leaves much to be desired. Small systems in the game do not work correctly. For example, trade. Then your ships will stop sailing just like that, for no known reason. Then they just all crowd into one dock, although you have four of them and in each they deal with different goods. Sometimes when building pyramids, you are clearly shown an icon of one stone, but in reality you need a completely different one. And you sit for half an hour and can't understand why they don't want to take the stone to the pyramid. The warehouse is full, but because they need a different stone there. Patches come out, fix something, break something. Overall, there is movement. At the moment the game is raw. The Settlers. New Allies is a new part of the popular strategy game series The Settlers, which was announced in 2021. The game is being developed by Blue Byte Studio, which has repeatedly pleased its fans with high-quality projects. The game is an economic strategy with elements of a turn-based game, where the player will manage and develop his colony. Players will be able to build buildings, mine resources, create an army and wage war with other players. The game will feature a new colony development system that will allow players to manage the economy, improve buildings and upgrade their workers. Players will also be able to control their army, send it on combat missions and fight with other players in multiplayer mode. One of the main features of the game will be sophisticated graphics and a unique game world that players will be able to explore. The developers promise that players will be able to see many interesting places and meet many new characters. Some players have left positive reviews, noting that the game retains the classic gameplay of the Settler series, while adding new mechanics and improvements that make the game even more interesting. Many players also praise the beautiful graphics and sound. However, there are also negative reviews. Still, it's worth checking out for fans of the series. Total Conflict Resistance This is a unique symbiosis of global strategy, tactics and first-person action. Realistic mass battles, many types of armored vehicles, weapons, uniforms, unique mechanics, exciting free gameplay. The game is in early access and it is quite crude. It certainly has many disadvantages, ranging from a weak strategy component, from the global map to battles, and stupid bots to a weak shooter component. But this is an early version and updates with something new are rolled out almost every week. I'll start with the cons. The entire strategy on the global map comes down to total war. There is a bias towards politics, but in this game, it is very superficial. The strategy in battle. Everything is quite painstakingly done when compared with Mount and Blade, which is what this game is trying to be like. There are stupid bots that you send into the building and some leave, while others remain in place. So, in general, the control is quite uncomfortable. It would of course be nice to take a pause, as in strategies, so that you could think about which flank and which troops to lead, but there is none and you are trying to command the troops while simultaneously shooting at enemies. The balance here is still bad. While you are thinking about how to scrape together soldiers to repel attacks, the bot sends you an army two to three times larger. Shooter component. Not everything is so bad with it, but after the latest update, rockets from the RPG began to fly through cars. That is, it made the RPG almost useless. Shooting is not bad, there is recoil. Although you don't feel the weight, you feel how you are shooting. The bots here are not that terrible, but they are clearly stupid. They can run past you and they don't care at all. They can almost miss you at point-blank range. Your bots can shoot at each other by accident. Obstacles are not important to them, but goals are important. Poorly controlled in strategic mode in battle. Now the pros. 
Interesting gameplay. If you want to try something new, then the game is quite suitable. It is updated all the time and it is clear that the developers are really trying. A variety of equipment, the weapons of two countries, the USA and Russia, are presented in the game, the equipment does not look bad, the weapons do the same. There is nothing unique about the weapon, but still not a bad choice. I recommend the game, but not for everyone and it's better to wait for now. The Great War, Western Front. This is a well-developed strategy about the First World War from Petroglyph Studio, the creators of Command and Conquer Remastered and Star Wars. Empire at War. The game will take you to the Western Front 1914 to 1919, where you will take command and contribute to history. Choose a faction and lead it to victory. You will command armies in brutal real-time battles, while determining the course of the entire war in turn-based strategy mode. Build fortified areas. Explore new types of weapons such as poisonous gases and tanks. Make key decisions, the consequences of which can seriously affect the outcome of military operations. Pros. Good duration. I advise you to play on medium or high difficulties. The campaign for one of the sides will take about 15 to 20 plus hours to complete. The atmosphere of the Western Front, attack whistles, corpses, artillery, events of that time. Well-developed historical battles. There is an encyclopedia and tutorial. Of the minuses, too long, if you play on normal or higher difficulty, then you only need to carry out battles manually, and in the first eight hours, they will be extremely monotonous and drawn out, since you have nothing explored, no tanks, no aircraft, no buildings, no bunkers, you will run to the bayonet line under artillery cover. New content comes too late. If you squeeze all the juice out of yourself, the game ends very quickly, you will not have time to develop along the technology tree and will win with naked infantry supported by light artillery. Crooked Pathfinding The AI is frankly stupid. It often pushes ahead, merges in suicidal attacks. No critical hockeys. Poor contrast between the grids of firing sectors and the map of structures on the battlefield. The contours merge with the terrain. You have to look closely and check the minimap. A number of other unpleasant release bugs. Overall, this is a decent, sticky game set in the First World War, but one that needs some serious polishing and rebalancing. Spellforce, Conquest of EO. The gameplay is a global 4x strategy with turn-based battles. At the start, you are offered to choose from three types of magicians, Alchemist, Artifactor, Necromancer, the difficulty of defeating, and the starting region. After that, we are thrown onto the world map. Some objects are installed in rigidly defined positions, some are randomly generated. The task here is to defeat everyone, capture key points and dominate in every possible way. A magician's tower is given under our command, which will be the main stronghold of our forces. She will not just stand in the middle of the locations, but will also be able to fly wherever we need her, carrying out a kind of expansion. You can either create units yourself or hire them from nearby available recruitment points. After battles, our warriors gain experience and new levels and are upgraded. Sometimes we get heroes under the command, essentially, these are the same units, just a little stronger than average. The battles are fairly typical for turn-based combat. We steer by squads of warriors or creatures, heroes. Sometimes fighters have unusual abilities, for example, a goblin shaman can heal in the middle of a battle. The world map is large, there is something to fight for, a variety of enemies and points of interest, the sea, nice graphics, good music and sound, random generation of the world every new campaign, many types of units and enemies. It's interesting to build a tower and level up. This is not spell force in the sense that we would like. No role system or significant heroes for you. There are only three types of main characters. I didn't like that you couldn't create large armies or that this mechanism was incomprehensible. In the end, of course, I would like the game to continue the Spellforce series, but, alas, it's about something else altogether, with completely new gameplay. At the same time, this is not to say that it is, in principle, bad. The name just confuses expectations. The Last Haven. The world after nuclear war. Not a bad game with good potential. I'm glad that the author went for hardcore gameplay which does not forgive mistakes and keeps you in suspense. Having started the game, we will find ourselves in one of three previously selected locations, 
where we will have to begin setting up a settlement for survivors in a world that has supposedly suffered a catastrophe. This world is filled with radiation, the climate is becoming less favorable for life every day, it is getting colder and zombies, wild animals, and marauding neighbors are trying to penetrate us. We have to think not only about food and resources, but also about defense. For this we have at our disposal soldiers, pillboxes, observation towers, fences, armored personnel carriers, factories that produce all kinds of weapons and protection, including gas masks. But not everything is so gloomy, except for defense, we can attack neighboring locations, gathering our own squad, and eliminate once and for all those who prevented us from living, or take away vital resources from them. Despite minor flaws, the game has a soul and makes you want to play it. Pros Character customization is presented in the form of a choice of uniforms and weapons for soldiers. A promising combat system, but at the moment the tactical component of the battle has not been fully realized. Possibility of production and use of military equipment, from pickups to armored personnel carriers. The ability to surround a settlement with a metal fence and long-term firing points, a wide selection of tools for organizing defense. No micromanagement. Everything is clear in the areas of resources. On the one hand, this can be interpreted as a minus, but this game also has enough other tasks to concentrate the player's attention. Dynamic weather and requirements for the organization of the living space of a settlement. Some kind of global map, where opposing factions are presented, with the possibility for the player of counterattacks and sweeps. Of the minuses, lack of game manual. Everything has to be learned through bitter experience. Chaotic and often uncontrollable behavior of the player's armed units during combat. They may run somewhere without orders or not shoot at all at the enemy who is directly opposite. The inability to install a turret with a cannon or other attachments on an armored personnel carrier or to staff it with a field doctor. There are too few player opportunities to positively influence stability. I would like more expanded customization of the player's faction and settlers. There is no possibility to increase the population. The settler skill system is not presented. It seems that all their lives they have been preparing to work as an engineer at a weapons factory and then immediately become builders to dismantle this very plant. The game is definitely worthy of attention for all fans of post-apocalypse or survival games. I'm glad that the developer is actively adding new mechanics and quickly combating bugs. Silica. Immerse yourself in an exciting blend of first-person shooter and real-time strategy, each with its own genre. The game gives you the freedom to choose without forcing you to play one or the other. Pros. It's cool that you can switch between sides within the same session. Fans of Dune will have flashbacks equals. The game feels like it took inspiration from Dune. The graphics here are very cool, there is also a day and night cycle, and it is very atmospheric. At night in the shadow of the moon you can't see anything at all. They did a very good job with the lighting. There is a cooperative. Of the minuses. Crude. Lots of bugs. So many. There are freezes. Artificial intelligence is stupid. Absolutely. Here are some examples. Harvesters get stuck all the time because of people. The AI set up a machine factory with machines exiting into the rock. As a result, people were without cars. If you manually build another machine plant where needed, then the AI will not build machines there. For the aliens, there is another similar situation, but more fun. Essentially, there is only one resource. Silica and biomass. Why alone? Because cockroaches dig biomass and people dig silica, but in the end, everyone has their own resource. Boring. The gameplay so far boils down to digging for resources and spamming troops. There is no strategy. For people in the location, you can also capture bunkers that shoot small animals, but which are broken by not the most powerful troops in the back with a couple of blows. By and large, in the first part of the game, we are digging resources and pumping up technology, and then it goes like in some Dota, along one line cockroaches go to people, and people shoot back. The conclusion is, yes, it's damp. There are a lot of bugs, lags, and freezes. Optimization clearly suffers. But there is potential, the makings of something really interesting. Mechabellum. An epic auto-battler set on the newly colonized planet far, far away. You command an army of mechs fighting in massive PvP battles. Customize and level up your units before battle, strategically place them on the battlefield and watch them ruthlessly destroy your enemies. This is a very good auto-battler. 
I especially like that there is no rush in the gameplay, the battle is divided into rounds, you can see the enemy units deployed in the last round, there are improvements in random bonuses, you can always think and deploy countermeasures against enemy troops. At the beginning of the battle, we select a commander, each has its own starting units, HP and bonuses. Accordingly, after each round, surviving units inflict damage equal to the total cost to the enemy commander. Even by losing several rounds in a row, you can realize a comeback and noticeably pummel the enemy, since at the end you can deploy massive and expensive units. Plus, there is leveling up between battles. Each unit can unlock additional upgrades, but we still only select 4 for battle. The gameplay is exciting and relaxed without rushing, but it is necessary to think and correctly call and deploy troops. In general, the game is pure fun, especially when the battle drags on for 15 rounds in 2 on 2 mode. In the end, from the abundance of explosions, everything starts to lag and it becomes no longer very clear what is happening there on the battlefield, but it looks epic and the result is a wagon of emotions. Write in the comments which game do you like more? and what selection of games to make next time.